Prime Minister David Ben-Gurion refused to comment immediately, but is expected to address an emergency meeting for Knesset any moment now. Discretion is going to be essential. You are to tell no one. No one. Sir. Ah, here it comes. Let's go in. At an emergency meeting with the Knesset this afternoon, Prime Minister David Ben-Gurion announced that Adolf Eichmann, wanted for his part in the murder of six million Jews by the Nazis, is now captive on Israeli soil. He will stand trial for crimes against humanity and the Jewish people. <laughs> Would I ever? Yeah. I still love you. Good morning, Benjamin. Personnel are um, collecting testimony and taking depositions from survivors. But only you will have the full picture. Based on the material you are given, you will decide what questions to ask Eichmann and when. Yeah. Knowing you, I'm sure you'll very quickly gather enough evidence. It won't be by tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> ah, good hands. Captain Arneles, permit me to introduce the incorruptible Hans Lippmann. How do you do? Well, thank you. Hans will be assisting you. Please, sir. Kind Mr. God.
It has been 15 years. We want justice. Let the past stay in the past. Forget it. No, sir. We want the world to know what that man did. Revenge. If that's what you want to call it, darling. Yes, I do. Don't you think he should be tried by due process of law? Evna, even if he is found guilty, what are we going to do with him? Not execute him, so what's the point? Um, and who's right? going to do the interrogation? Who have we got to strain? No one. No one. Yes, no one. So, let's um, hang him or shoot him now, all right? Kill him? Mm. At least we save some money. And anyway, our legal process is a shambles. Yeah, but mm. the government are not prepared to ratify the death penalty. And how long has that been on the books? Since the creation of Israel? Yeah, 13 years. 12 years. 13, 13 years, years yeah. I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I think we're paying him too much respect by giving him a trial. Absolutely. Think about it, right? Absolutely. So, we give him a trial. Which indulges him. I mean, what new information can be gleaned? What else is there to know? He's a murderer. Any Jew who believes he's deserving of a trial is a traitor to his own people. Right. Don't you agree, Evna? I think we should have some more wine. Is everything okay, my friend? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What did the doctor say? Well, truth be told, I'm officially in remission. <laughs> That's wonderful. Isn't it, Sarah? I have polio of the spine. Yeah, but you've always had enough energy for two people. <laughs> Maybe. Not anymore, though. Big mistake, the doctor said, was to have children in the first place. But, uh, Evna and I always wanted a family. And they've been a blessing. I just don't want them to see me in a wheelchair. Among us, we lost about 60 of our family. Imagine that. That man is responsible for about 60 of our relatives not being here. You should pay someone to shoot him in the head and be done with it. And we'll look like a lot of trigger-happy kikes who deserve to lose our little strip of sand. Thank you. Herr Eichmann, my name is Captain Arthur Less. With your permission, I will be asking you some questions. Permission gladly granted, Captain.
Can you confirm that you signed this document here, Eichmann? Yes. It states that I came to Israel of my own free will in order to account for my part in the final solution. Captain, I think you will find that I can prove I was only a humble cog in what was admittedly a highly intimidating machine. Now, of course, on the scrap heap of history. The intention of the Third Reich surely was rather more than intimidation. Well, of course. The Reich was oppressed on three frontiers. Our survival as a civilized nation was in question. You in Israel now must know what it's like to be surrounded by your enemies. Herr Eichmann, I'm told that you are willing to give us your version of your role in the so-called Third Reich. Is that right? Well, let's begin. What did you learn today? We learned about daddy. Can we talk? Vera. Vera. But I was told not to tell anyone. How come every Jew in the country knew before I did? Even the children! I'm your wife! What are you doing? Why are you treating me like this? An order is an order. If I'm told not to tell anyone, then I Bullshit. can't. Bullshit, for Christ's sake. Bullshit. What is your religious affiliation? There's one creator who is independent of the material universe. But to believe that God is separate from his creation, as I have often been pointing out to my children, is... Uh... You have four sons. The second youngest, Dieter, was named after your friend Dieter Wischlensky. He was also your subordinate and testified in Nuremberg, saying that you... I know, I know. Blaming me, trying to save his neck. It didn't work. Vishlensky claimed that you said you would jump into your grave laughing because you have the death of five million Jews on your conscience, which gives you extraordinary satisfaction. I did not say Jews. I said enemies of the Reich. Captain, is it possible I could have some red wine to settle my stomach? Were you ever aware of using drink as an anesthetic in the war? Captain. If you want to show me as a drunken Nazi fiend sending trainloads of Jews to their deaths in an ecstasy of alcoholic rage, I can see the publicity value in that. But between ourselves, the exactness of my memory for meetings and personnel 20 years ago will dispel any notion of lack of control. Do you ever regret your admiration for the Führer? The Führer was a mirror held up to a greater Germany. When we fell in love with him, it was really our greater selves that he was enabling everyone to see. What about the Jews who admired Hitler? I sympathize with their position because I shared their beliefs. And what do Germans not share with Jews? 
the inherited race. The first desire which we had orders to carry out was to completely clean the German race's blood of impurities. To purify Germany, why do you need to kill Greek Jews or Hungarian Jews? I know. I never met a Greek Jew I didn't like. But those were the orders. How did your doctor show the difference between the German race and others? Hmm. They were able to show that the congenital deformations of the Slavic races were nearly always sexual in origin. sons again. separation from my loved ones for some time. One of my few regrets in life is that moving between Poland, Berlin and Budapest, I get to spend so little time with you growing up. Oh, 
Why was your department called 4B4? Roman forced for Gestapo, B was for religion, and Arabic script 4 was for Jews. It was the transport department, which accounts for the relative anonymity I enjoyed before all those known back traitors emptied their chamber pots over my reputation. You had the reputation of being something of a departmental tyrant in 4B4. It wasn't my job to be loved. When thinking of my role, which now seems so long ago in the past, and almost unimportant since it did not succeed, I often ponder the lessons of history. be subtle connections. With five million leaving through the smokestacks, the particles have to come down somewhere. In 1942, your chauffeur received a prison sentence. For theft, he stole from my office. One meter square of linoleum, which you as sole witness found in the car. Yes, it was reckless of him to leave it there. He was sentenced to four years. What else had he done to upset you? I don't know what you mean. You were married in 1935, but according to Dieter Wyslensky, you enjoyed numerous liaisons. Does that carry the death sentence too? I don't know what liaisons you refer to, Captain. I don't know. I don't know at all. Help me. Two maids, three secretaries, a businesswoman, and a mistress on a stolen farm in Austria. Not stolen. The Reich transferred all property to itself, entirely legally. She was Jewish. In fact, she had earlier been divorced from an SS officer for being Jewish. I have no recollection of this. Let me help. A Reich requisitioned farm, 10 kilometers west of Dobrun. And when Fräulein Anne-Marie Schmidt moved in, you staffed it with concentration camp labor. No, 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 no. This accusation that I would run some rural love nest with a Jewess in Austria, it's certainly comical. <laughs>
so many liberties. Mm. transfer papers on your married name, you will stay here without workforce. But what about the animals and horses? Shoot them. Papa. Hi. You want a drink? Yes. Thank you. How long did you have an association with Countess Ingrid von Hyama? Ingrid was a baroness, not the Countess. We came together at the beginning of the Hungarian evacuation and parted at the end. It must have been expensive for a humble Oberstorm von Führer with a family to support to impress such a titled lady. I understand that you indulged her expensive tastes. I don't know what you mean. I wasn't going to bring it up today, but one item you gave her came to 1,500 Reichmarks, material to be supplied by client. 300 grams of dental gold. Where did that come from? I beg your pardon? To create the twin 24 karat suicide rings for you and the Baroness. Even though neither of you seem to have availed yourselves of the cyanide capsules. Fool that I was in those mad times as the Reich collapsed. I fancied in Hungary. I had found my fellow soul.
This dress is one my great, great, great grandmother wore at the ball to celebrate freeing Vienna from the Turks. It's worn with nothing underneath. Your ancestor would have approved my modern victory against the Orient. In six months, I cleansed the end of every jewel. Your love don't go far enough while you can. I don't go far enough. Out of 900,000 Hungarian Jews, you have killed only half a million. You care less. You let them slip through your fingers. Poland? Three million Jews. Today, none are left. None? None. Add to that, 120,000 Germans. Jews? Jews, Jews, of course, Jews. War? War. 700,000 Russians. War. 75,000 French. War. 100,000 Dutch. More? 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 Not enough. Over four million Jews have already processed. Killed. Use the right words, or you never become a master race. soldier. Yes. This infant has a hereditary sickness of the blood. Now, do your duty for the Great Reich. decision. Child's flesh will feed your dogs. Any bones they don't eat will be ground down to make a fertilizer. You have always boasted Auschwitz throws the best cabbages.
had in what? Found my fellow soul. Was wäre in der Erklärung? Sind Sie sicher? Sind Sie wirklich sicher? In Ordnung. Auf Wiederhören. Berashit Brayar und Nai et Hashumayim verhirt ha Aret. Herr Beckerbrand. It's the first book of Moses. Genesis, chapter one. It's how the Bible starts. In Hebrew. Of course. Of course it is. You were appointed Reichsführer's deputy for Jewish questions because of your language skills. I may have exaggerated a little, if only to protect the Jews in my charge. You see yourself as a protector of Jews. Where it was possible without going against my soldier's oath. Ah, Captain, yes. They told me 
that I would find you here, not in the prison. I had to leave. It's standard security procedure, Minister. Mm -hmm. Give you a lot. <laughs> Something wrong. You know, when we started this process, those who were affected by the genocide were excluded from recruitment into Bureau 06. Until today, we understood that your father died of natural causes in Theresienstadt. What are you saying? I'm saying, Afner, that you need to take a look at this. Sit, 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 sit. See here, Eichmann's signature. It's a passenger list for Auschwitz. But look further down. There. Your father, Abraham Bless. With the stroke of the pen, he personally sent him to the gas chambers. You don't need me to tell you what this means. The minute the media finds out, you're gone. Finished. So, you need to get a confession. And you need to do it quick, Captain. the mess. Why are you so upset? The Nazis killed my mother too. But I'm really upset, Edna, because I'm worried about you. It's gonna come out sooner or later. They can't keep a secret and you know that. This is a government of the pieces. You are their pawn. Hello. Hello, is this Captain Lith? This is Miriam Frolet from the Jerusalem Post. I hope I haven't caught you in an inconvenient time, but I wondered if you could possibly spare a few moments. I Hi, Vera. Oh. Oh, hey. Um, I'm sorry. I thought I was picking up Ruth and Zachary. Oh, Vera, it's just... We don't want you picking the kids up at the moment. Sarah doesn't, actually. She thinks it's too dangerous. Uh, why? You're a target.
was beginning to think our little meeting had stopped, Captain. I hope it was nothing I said. You know what I've been thinking? If a greater act of atonement would suffice than my own execution, let me hang myself as an example and deterrent to all anti-Semites. We are obliged to make every effort to keep you alive for now. It was just a thought. That's our Sini, the Mufti of Jerusalem and President of the Supreme Muslim Council. He has called for the extinction of Jewry. Do you know him personally? I met him when I visited Palestine for the Reich in 1938. But we were not close. He was impressed by Hitler, not by me. Is it, um... Is it <clears throat> not true? Or Husseini, at your invitation, visited the concentration camps as part of a diplomatic visit he made to Germany in 1941. Did he? I can't remember now. Did you ever receive gifts from him on behalf of the Nazi party? Never. Never, never. He's lying. Every time he repeats himself three times, he's lying. You're right. These are the gifts I can receive from Hussein. Gold chains and coins and a jewel dagger. I knew it. I give them back. the information that comes up in our researches. I never knew Mein Kampf was translated into Arabic. Facts are strange things. For instance, I read in the newspaper your wife's called Vera. Well, that is my wife's name too. What an amazing coincidence. The chances of us both, perhaps, uh, perhaps it goes some way to explaining my fellow feelings for you. Tell me, Captain, who trained you in interrogation? The British? That must make you a very fair policeman, then. British police are meant to be fair, aren't they? I expect it beats being a hairdresser. Who told you I'd been a hairdresser? It was in the newspapers as well, another fact. So here I am, sharing my secrets with a Jewish barber. My wife's family made it a condition that I should have a trade. Well, I had to join the Nazi party before my bearer would have me. Off you go. Go on. Where's me? But I don't remember. From a uh, Professor Hurt of Strasbourg University Medical. 
I must have turned the whole thing over to the administration and supply department. I mean, <laughs> where could I have got the skulls they wanted? At the time of writing, these skeletons and skulls would have still been alive. So the raw materials, as it were, would have been live humans. Jews. Look, this is really nothing to do with me. The doctors could always go independently to the concentration camps and select whatever they required. I'm a transportation officer. If the order for shipment goes out to you and you carry out the order knowing they will die, does that not make you responsible? I can't remember this case at all. And there's no documentation involving me. You could have given verbal instructions. I can remember a conversation discussing some such items. But section four, my section, was not involved. So why then are you being consulted about skulls if you weren't aware of the deaths? And that the heads were then transported in specially made individual caskets to Strasbourg? I'm wrecking my brains. I have no idea, Captain, no idea. I was never frightened before. Not even when we were running from the gendarmes in Kibbutz in France. Do you recall receiving a Red Cross representative on the 6th of April? 1945, in a visit to Theresienstadt. Yes. But I can't remember his name. Dubois? His report says, on April 6, 1945, we visited the Theresienstadt ghetto and held lengthy conferences with Obersturm Bonfier Eichmann, the direct deputy of the Reichswehr SS, the specialist of all Jewish questions. Dubois writes that he asked you who authorized for the transports, but he didn't get an answer. At this stage in the war, every conceivable department is exerting pressure, shipping everyone here to Theresienstadt. And how many of your transports have been involved in movement to Auschwitz? You will have to ask Dr. Epstein about numbers. But he says you have the figures. Herr Eichmann is shipping Jews to the gas chambers of Auschwitz humane way of relieving pressure at Theresienstadt, in your view? I was obeying orders. Whose orders were you obeying? Hitler's. But I thought you were directly responsible to Himmler. What is your point, Captain? I'm simply trying to ascertain, Herr Eichmann, if you were acting under orders. Or what? Or whether you were acting under your own authority. No, 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 no. Whereas, if he's just taking the stance that he's following orders and he's a transportation yeah. officer, this completely contradicts anything that he says. Yes. Please, please, go on. Well, there's a rabbi living in St. Louis now who claims he knows somebody who saw Eichmann shooting a baby. And the primary witness? She's dead. Then forget it. So, Captain, how are you? I want to talk to you about my protection minister. My door was yes, vandalized. Yes, yes, I heard about that. The officer on duty has been reprimanded. I want to assure you, Admiral, that we take these threats on your family very seriously. As do I.
the walls of our council as well as our official meeting day tomorrow. Thank you so much. You're yeah, very welcome. Who is that? Captain Les. Yes? Pleased to meet you. Dr. Robert Savatius, counsel for the defense. Gentlemen. Have you heard my good news, Captain? going through the transcripts. There's not enough. Enough what? Enough hard evidence that his lawyer can't chip away at in court or get him extradited to Germany. There's no death penalty in Germany. <laughs> Which is ironic. You know, I've had to send researchers all over the world at vast expense to talk to survivors, but I have to support their evidence with an actual confession. You'll never confess. You won't admit he's guilty of anything. Don't you want a confession, Avner? We are approaching this like some shtetl Jew. I'm not interested if he had a dozen Jewish mistresses. I want an admission of guilt. So do I, Mordecai. Thank you, my dear sir. I was thinking, we have a great deal in common. Like you, I was a police officer following orders. You were SS, not police. Easy to forget. You witnessed Jews being shot. I didn't know what was going on at first. Because that kind of thing was nothing to do with me. I became ill at what was happening. I threw up. I could hardly speak at the inhumanity. We have several depositions that you were present at Hankins. <laughs> that wasn't me. I would have remembered such a terrible thing. According to our informants, you intervened. It required the nooses to be reused because although it was faster to cut them down, a Jewish life was not worth the waste of rope. That's a lie. Complete fabrication. I had nothing to do with killing Jews. I've never killed a Jew. I've never ordered anyone to kill a Jew. Maybe that is what gives me a certain peace of mind. I might be guilty because I helped with evacuation. Carbon monoxide was proving inefficient. So you began researching other means of killing. 
It is not your intentions as a commandant here that are in question, but your understanding of efficiency. Cyclone B has been developed after successful use in the lousing garments. And it is found to be just as efficient with human vermin. If this new gas is administered correctly in this volume of space, <laughs> there's no need for any interludes in the cycle. Did you have official knowledge then that this new technique of gassing with Zyklon B was going on? I knew it. Of course I did. Everyone did. So how does deportation not amount to killing? It wasn't my job to decide who was selected for the work process and who was not. Vishlensky, in his Nuremberg memoir, suggests the existence of a sustained culture of death in your department. I will tell you how reliable his memoirs are. They say there were ways of circumventing Hitler's orders. There was one way, and only one way, to take a pistol and shoot yourself. But I obeyed. Regardless of what I was ordered to do, I would have obeyed. I can't shoot my skin, Captain. That was my attitude at the time. When I received an order, I obeyed, because an oath is an oath. And I had taken an oath of loyalty. I refused to take responsibility for things I had no orders for, and which were not my department. At the same time, I'm not one of those people who said suddenly at the war's end, I was always against it who tried to save their necks with tawdry explanations. What's going on? Hmm? What's the hell? That I am. Not feeling so hungry tonight. How many Jews were evacuated from Hungary in the first period you were there? We've been over this so many times, Captain. How many? 450,000, probably. Is it true you told the Jewish council in Budapest that they could only save Jews by fully cooperating with you? How, how much money does it cost to cooperate with you, Herr Eichmann. I never took money to release yours. I have an account here from Dr. Kastner, head of the Jewish Council in Budapest. Eichmann said, quote, Kastner, I've got to clean this Jewish shit out of the provinces, and no arguments are tears will help. Don't you worry, Father. Hungarian Jews have been gassed. Just get me the lorries. I deliver Polish Jews, not Czech Jews. There's a grain of truth in it. With a lot of theatrical trimmings. But even Kastner doesn't mention money. Jewish shit in exchange for lorries. Yes, those bad words. I certainly didn't use those bad words. So, lorries with the currency. Yes, we had a shortage. Kastner also asked you to reduce the overcrowding and the forced evacuation, citing the fact that 90 persons had been crammed into a single rail car designated for 40. Most of the overfillments were actually small children. So where would these children have been going? The home. Yeah. Do you have a moment? Who are you? I work for the Post. I can't talk to you. I thought I made that clear. I know about your father. What do you want? Your story. I'm not the headline. Eichmann is.
Is it appropriate for the interrogator of Eichmann to be the son of one of many guests at Auschwitz? Is that your angle? Yeah, it's a great story. Can you prove it? <laughs> Captain, we wouldn't have gotten this far with me bluffing. How did you find out? <laughs> Just give me two weeks. Exclusive? I want to know everything. I want Avner the man. Who he is, what he is, his family life, his professional family? life. No. no. Do you want the time, Avner? I need two weeks. I'll give you one. by journalists for a start. Children are asking where you are. I have five more days. Five. Was the deportation of the gypsies to the death camps handled by your bureau for before? Not all the gypsies, just the ones from Germany. All the gypsies who were apprehended inside the so-called Greater Reich were taken to Auschwitz and gassed. Captain, all I know is we had to make the rolling stock available and draw up schedules and... What were the guidelines? Guidelines? For exterminating the gypsies. Guidelines for the gypsies were simple. <laughs> there weren't any. So why exterminate all the gypsies? Oh, I don't know. It was one of those things, all of a sudden, the order goes out and it happens without questions. A half a million gypsies rounded up and transported for special treatment by Bureau 4B4. Just like that. trying to divert attention from his own position. This letter is about the production of gas, is it not? He was always covering his tracks because one day he could be held to account. Did your department, 4B4, provide any supervisory personnel for the shipments to the extermination camps of Riga, Alvin, I was a transport Arthur. officer. I was never consulted when policies were made. Not according to our findings. You think you had nothing to do with this? What 
as your point, Captain. What was your attitude towards the total physical destruction of the Jewish people and the framework of the so-called final solution? I don't want to avoid responsibility for what I did. But I am not and have never been an anti-Semite. Yes. My dear children, I am so proud of you all that you are sons of mine, of the fatherland, healthy German boys. Your father is the same father you always had, but the world has moved on, and so must we all. You've got to wake us up, Daddy. Sorry? I just debuted myself. Well done, Hannah. Well done. How are you feeling? I'm sorry. I'm sorry I've neglected you. That man has pushed us apart. Eaten away at your soul. No grapes. I'm kidding. Peel me an orange, please. Do you remember the kaput orange groves in the evening? That magic hour after sunset when all the oranges glowed like a million tiny moons. You remember swimming in the sea? I remember. We were carefree then. Reckless even. Then I got ill. But the next year you were picking oranges 
Yes, because you looked after me. I'm going to look after you again, like when we lived in Haifa. I won't be picking oranges again. Yes, you will. What about Eichmann? I'm finished with Eichmann. You've got two more days, you said. Yes. Do the two days. And it's over. You must be familiar with the statement of Bruno Warnick at the Nuremberg trials. He said on the extermination process it transpires that only gas can be considered because Eichmann has ruled. To eliminate the masses that were to be expected by shooting is absolutely impossible and also too hard on the SS men involved having to shoot women and children. I had nothing, nothing, nothing to do with gassing. Then who gave the orders? The Führer. Yes. Heydrich told me that Hitler had decided on the extermination of the Jews and the Führer's wishes were law. Well, according to Warnick, Eichmann occupied a dominant, if not to say absolute, position and was directly responsible to Himmler. The truth is, I was never directly under Himmler, so Warnick's statement is extremely far-fetched. It is supported by the Commandant of Auschwitz, Rudolf Hess. Yes, well, the rejection of Hess's monstrous lies is not going to have any effect on my punishment, is it? It may not be mentioned in the Geneva Convention, but a little lubricant on the inspection finger would be most welcome. This is a chapter of glory in our history, which has never been written, and which never shall be written, since we know how hard it would be for us if we still had the Jews as secret saboteurs. Poznan, October 4th, 1943. Himmler gave a speech to senior SS officers. Do you remember his keynote speech on the Jewish question? I was never told that Himmler made such a speech. Never, never, never. You see, Herr Captain, it was not necessary to make speeches about what the Reichsführer believed. Deep down, we knew. October 4th, 1943. Himmler visits captured Soviet soldiers waiting to be transported to concentration camps in Riga. His Reich deputy, Adolf Eichmann, who was later to escape prosecution... He's still denying all connections to Himmler. Why? Everybody, please, please, listen. Please stop what you're doing. I need you to find and check all written communication between Himmler and Eichmann. Now. Thank you. Forced marches of the Jews out of Hungary between October and December of 1944 are puzzling our researchers. Still? There seems to be some ambiguity about your status and whether or not it was you who had actually been appointed to complete all this work. Of course, 
I was ordered to do it. The suggestion that it was voluntary is in any respect an insult to me and anyone who was transported. An insult. On October 17th, 1944, you returned to Budapest to organize the first forced march deportation, of which an estimated 3,000 died during the march itself. As you can see, Karstner, I'm back. And I just want to tell you that Germany has passed its low point. A new weapon is being produced, which the Allies will be powerless against. Vengeance, weapon number three. In recognition of this fact, I absolutely need another 70,000 Hungarian Jews, 20,000 pick and shuffle Jews for the southeast wall in Ostmark, and uh, five separate transports of 10,000 each from here to Austria on foot. Your list. Heil Hitler. I don't think, Captain, I don't think many died. Except that just normally some must have. And it must have been sad to see civilians struggling along the last kilometers. But there was nothing I could do. I couldn't do a thing. <laughs> At the most, I could have said, keep your Jews. I don't need them. Auschwitz was full to overflowing. Oh, yes. That's right. We have transportation orders from Theresienstadt to Auschwitz signed by you right up to the end. And of these 50,000 from Hungary who left on foot, you knew you were sending them to the deaths even if they survived the march. I assure you, Captain, I have no idea of the suffering. You had a witness report at the time from a group of highly ranked Germans, of which the commanding general of the Waffen SS Jutner was one. When we confronted him at first, Eichmann admitted nothing. Then after he learned we would write to Himmler, he withdrew the marching orders. That's quite correct. The marching orders were withdrawn by me. But one week later, the marches recommenced. Really? I don't recall that. Jutner goes on to say, Eichmann, in defiance of Himmler's new orders to cease the killing of Jews, decreed once again that all Jews and their children over 10 were to be deported to Auschwitz and Dachau and the gas chambers. That's impossible. I would never have disobeyed orders. You are Himmler's orders which you disobeyed. Here are the marching orders signed by you. Send to my family, Kevin. Send the letter, Kevin, I beg you. It's not just Tito. I'm worried what will happen to the little one. 6 years old is too young to lose your father. Six years old, you say? You'll be seven soon. He has a wonderful temperament. Would you say he's your favorite? I love him all. You wish you had more? Of course. I love being a father. I love children. But you were killing children. Them. The same age as your youngest, some younger. I know, I, can, I admit that, but... 500,000 children in four years! I know, but... But what?! But what?! 
they will choose. This is our last interview. I'm being posted to Berlin. Thank you for not writing about my family. So Eichmann's been found guilty? Yes. Seven months of interrogation, followed by a trial. Was it worth it? Let alone the expense to the taxpayers. We showed him more justice than he ever showed us. This is a day that will go down in history forever. Adolf Eichmann was executed last night following a state trial. He was hanged just after midnight. Admittedly, a highly intimidated. It wasn't my job to be loved. I had nothing, nothing, nothing to do. I with was this. obeying orders. I've never killed a Jew. I've never ordered anyone want to punish a Jew. Why could I have got the scores they wanted? I don't want to avoid responsibility. I might be guilty because I helped with evacuation. And have never been an anti-Semite.